Hey guys, welcome to another video, and in this one, we're going to dissect one of the coolest dashboards you will ever see. Stay tuned. Okay guys, here we are back again, and just a quick update. As you know, I've been working on the course a lot, and I was actually working on the stories section of the expert, so I thought I was gonna already add a few things in. Um, so if you haven't see it, uh, seen it, please check the description below. There is almost 40 hours worth of training content, so if that's something you're interested in, check out the website. And I was working on some story videos, and one of the really cool stories that I remember um, was this one right here. So let me show you guys that. It's this one. It's the KPMG Global Executive Survey. And I can't remember if they did one that's 2020, 2021 or something like that. They're all kind of the same thing anyway. But what's really cool about this is it really showcases what you can do with stories. And that's what we're going to talk about in this video. And in particular, I'm going to show you something else that's very interesting, which is you can take very basic elements of Tableau bar chart, dual axis, maps, that kind of thing. And if you style it and brand it in a certain way, it can really elevate your designs to something like this. And it sometimes makes you go, it's like, damn, was that really made in Tableau, right? So really impressive. And what I'm gonna do in this video is I'm gonna break down all the things you have to do and maybe even do a few small demos on how they were able to achieve some of these designs. And it's gonna be so shocking as to how simple some of them are, all right? So starting with the front page, and also if you wanna check it out, I'm gonna leave a description, I'll uh, leave a link in the description below for this. So in this one, all it is, is they took a photo that they already had and they uploaded it as an image and they overlaid some titles. So how do they do that? All right, let's open one up. I'm gonna get one prepped and we will do some quick demos. I'm not gonna go super detailed because a lot of that's either covered by videos I already have on YouTube or it's covered in the courses that I've just published. So you can check some of those out. All right, let's go. And I'm gonna clear a lot of these dashboards as well, just so we're not cluttered. Let's get rid of all this. Let's get rid of all this. Okay, so a fresh one, and let's get rid of all this. Okay, there we go. So how did they do this first page? Well, all you have to do is when you go to dashboard mode, you simply upload an image like so. Okay, choose an image. See, hopefully I've got an image here. Yeah, right, let's say this one. Fit, center, just to put it on the whole thing. Now the trick with this, and actually probably doing it in floating is a better way to do it. So if we make that floating, and all you have to do is match these dimensions, right? So it's your actual size. So let's say I make this a little bit smaller, uh, make this a little bit smaller this page, the actual dashboard page. Let's say it's 1000 by 600. You simply have to make this one 1000 by 600. Oh, not 6000, 600. Okay, and you wanna start this at position zero, zero. Now, the reason I'm gonna have white here is because the image itself is not 1000 by 600. So what you wanna do is either, uh, is, um, sorry, you wanna make it so that the original image is these dimensions. You can do that in Microsoft Paint, you can crop it in some other tools if you like, but that's how you can do it to make the match. Now I believe if I go in here uh, and we don't do center or we don't do fit, it's one of them. There we go. So if you only do center, it will fill out the space that you have. So that's an, a, a neat trick. However, sometimes it may crop unintentionally. So you just wanna be a bit careful with that. Then what they did was they simply took these text boxes right? And they overlaid the text just like that. For anything where it's, it looks like graphic art, they most likely did that in a different tool, like for example, the logos. And in which case, that's just overlaying an image. Easy. But look how nice it looks. Okay, so let's look at the first one. Well, really the second one. All right, so here we've got a few elements. So a pie chart is pretty standard and they put the um, labels here. What isn't so standard is this part. See how they have a bar chart? So the bar chart's pretty standard, but they actually have two figures in here. They've got a percentage and some sort of number. So how do you actually combine two text fields? Okay, so let me show you how they did that. Super, super simple. Let's go. Okay, 
So say I have, um, let's say, I want to choose one with a whole bunch of them. Let's say category and segment. Now they had two measures that they're using. So let's use two. Now it can be really anything, but let's do discount and quantity. Now the method I always like to do is you always want to build things one piece at a time. Don't try and shoot for the final solution in one go because either you'll make uh, mistakes or you will get lost. So I always like to build the individual elements as we go. Okay, so say I, uh, this see how this is greater than that, uh, um, than 100%. Maybe I'll just use a different figure. Let's say profit. Okay, so let's say I want to do profit slash quantity. I want to first extract the two values so I can see that they're not crazy. Then I want to actually apply the text boxes, uh, the text, uh, the measure into the text for each one. So this one will go in here into quantity. So holding control, we can duplicate into label. That's the first one. And then the second one, I can do the same thing. Okay. So now really what we're trying to do is we go, well, we want this label to go here. So all it is, is really moving this one into profit. That's all we're going to do. So we're going to go into profit, make sure we're in the right one. And we're simply going to move it like so. Now, the problem, the thing you're going to see is that sometimes it's going to display and sometimes it's not. And that is because if they're kind of conflicting in the space, Tableau will only show one. But the way you fix this is you go into label, three dots, and here we just go space. You can use a slash. You can use any symbol you want. You can do that. Okay. Right? So that's the first thing that they did. And then they also put it inside the box. So the way you do that is you simply center justify it. There you have it. Okay. That's how they did that part. So easy. Um, the next one is this one right here. So how did they introduce symbols plus sizing? Oh, easy. Okay. So in Tableau's backend, there is a repository um, and I'll provide a link for that below. And let me just make a quick note of that. Um, image repository, otherwise I will forget. Um, and then when you add, when you actually add that in, so let's say I have ship status, for example, and we have sales. Uh, let's do that. Okay, so they would have had something like this, but they would set it to shape. Now, this is kind of the starting point of how it's going to look. And we want to change this into the symbol that we want to use. Now, I've gone ahead and uploaded a whole bunch of stuff. You can see here I've got like icons already. So there is a folder in the back end that lets you do that. And you just drop some photos in there. And that's exactly what they did. And so let's say I picked a coffee cup and go OK. The coffee cups are all going to be the same size, but I can introduce sizing into that. See how that's changed size now? Maybe we'll get something a bit more pronounced. Maybe quantity. I didn't change all that much. Didn't change all that much. Maybe we'll choose a different one. Ship mode, maybe. Let's see. So you can see how they all have different sizes. And if you simply drop, um, for example, ship status into the colors, you can color them differently as well but all it is is just shapes that's all they did okay let's go to the next one all right so we're just smashing these out now let's go next all right so a map with a number and a circle inside so how do you do this one remember you always want to just kind of break down all the individual elements you need and then build the individual elements so in this case we know that we need a region right and we need a number with a circle in it. Okay, so let's go ahead and try that. So say I have a map. Okay, and we will do it with, let's say, state. So I've got all the states. Okay, I need two things. I need the region and I need a bubble. So the way we can do that is I can duplicate the longitude. So now I've got two. We make one of them a map like so, and we will reduce the opacity as well. Now, I can't remember if you had coloring. I oh, did have coloring. So say I do coloring for the state, like so, but it's nice and faded in the background. Okay, you can see like that. Then on this one, we want some sort of number. So let's say I did, um, 
uh, let's say I'll use first of the month just so it's small numbers. So we drop this into the text and we go minimum. Let's just say. Oh, maybe that's not a terrible example. Let's do uh, let's do minimum row ID. If I drop that in. Okay, so we've got a number now. And what we want to do is put the number inside the circle. And the way you do that is simply go into label, center, center. That's it. We make the bubble a little bit bigger so it can fit the number. And we do a dual axis. Okay, there you have it. And I think they chose like a color blue or something, right? Or maybe they did like a light blue with a black uh, border, maybe. Let's see. Maybe something like that, right? But that, that's kind of the basic premise of how you would do it. All right, pretty easy. And that's the thing. Look how cool it looks when you put all the styling and all the formatting in, all right? So these are, again, all the same elements. Hierarchy map, that's pretty standard. Donut chart, standard. This we've already covered. This we've already covered. But you can see with every single one, it looks like a, you know, a brochure. This one, I'm not going to show how, you how to build because that's a bump chart, and I do have videos on that already right and this is basically just um, a table they were just very clever in putting two visualizations next to each other so it's actually that's one and that's another one and what they did is they would have put that into a horizontal container so that it kind of fits nicely and it looks like it's all built together but this one on the right is very easy to do i'll show you that one so all you really need is like a table. <laughs> so let's say I've got subcategory and we want to show the value. So let's say we've got sales and we drop it into size. But I don't think he size that. I think they, they put it into color, right? So we do um, a sizing by color and then circle. That's it. We go large, okay? Make the bubbles a little bit bigger. So let's say I only had this many, okay? We have the bubbles, and then they had some sort of ranking, maybe. So if I'm going to do ranking, what I need to do is rank it off something. Let's say sales. I can go in here, quick table, rank. I've now got the rank value. I can drop that into text. Okay, we put that all in the middle, and now I also have rank and the value. Okay, we can color it by subcategory, right? From there, it's pretty basic. But my point is with all of this, a lot of the best visualizations, they use bar charts, they use line charts, because those are very easy to read. That's the reason it's the standard, right? This thing, another bump chart, but really it's just a dual axis. I can show you that real quick. So say I have some sort of um, time period. Let's say we got months, maybe not months, let's do quarters, something like that. I've got sales. And I have some sort of color. So let's say something like that. So the way you would do a line and a bubble is you just create a line and a bubble. So we duplicate this measure. We convert one to a bubble or a circle. Make it a little bit larger. Okay. And we dual axis. Synchronize. All right. Make one a little bit faded. And you've pretty much got like a bubble line chart, if you will, right? All right, as you can see, it's very easy. And then, you know, just having little borders and shading and stuff like that. But that's all kind of basic formatting. This is just a stacked bar, nothing crazy, a line chart. Let's do the next one. Same thing, right? Scatter plot with sizing. St again, standard. Again, same thing. So as you can see, it's just about being consistent in your styling, understanding the positioning. This one's a little bit different, but this all this one is doing is a map. So we'll do another one. So let's say I have like postal code, right, with a lot of dots in it. They've simply just colored it with like a with a, another dimension, let's say category. Okay. Now one of the tricks of if you have a lot of points is all about contrast and translucency. So for example, if I look at this area here, see how the spots, uh, the dots can kind of overlap. One way you can deal with this is actually make them a bit transparent. Okay. And you can actually see how they overlay. If I do that, OK, 
Okay. Um, and then also, if you go into the map layers, right, just wash it out a little bit or maybe have a better contrasting map if you decide to kind of go down that route. Okay. We can go here. Maybe even make the bubbles a little bit bigger so you can see kind of where the overlaps are. All right. There you go. So there's nice, lots of little kind of tricks that you can do to really enhance it. Okay. Maybe we'll do one more. That's just a scatter plot with shapes. We'll do one more and then we'll finish up. This one, okay, this one's a little bit trickier, but again, you got to break it down. You always think about it in terms of breaking it down. So you need a few things. You need a start position, an end position, and then a shape. So really, this is a dual axis. So the first, and because I don't have any data that can do this um, setup, I'll just explain it. So if you get rid of the stars, right, and just ignore that, what you really have is BMW, in terms of a data set, it'll say BMW, position one is that value there, and that value, so you have your X and Y, and then position two, another row of data, will be this point. And then in a column, you say, what's the start position, what's the end position, by just doing one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, for every single one, right? And then in your second one, you simply visualize just the star one, so the end position, and then you overlay and then change it to a shape, right? But again, always think about it in terms of what are the individual elements instead of going, oh man, that looks super advanced, I can't do that, all right? So I'll leave it there, um, a little bit of a different video, but hopefully you guys can see kind of how easy a lot of these more advanced dashboards are. They're just kind of misleading to the eye. So again, hope you guys enjoyed. Um, check out the course. It's really coming along. Almost 40 hours of content. Um, links are in the description. Thank you guys again, and I will see you next time.